and welcome to Driver's Ed. Uh, this is going to uh, be an interesting class. Uh, it's quite a large class. So we're going to wait for people to jump on in. Ah, uh, four people. So once you join in, what I'd like you to do is over in the comment section of YouTube is to put your name so I can see who is here. That is going to be part of your requirement for attendance. The other thing that I would like you to do is uh, you're going to text in in a moment, but we got to wait. Wow, 17 popped right in. We're getting up there. We're in the 20s, so we want to See that number grow just a little bit further. Oh, down to 13. Takes a little bit of time for people to get used to this format. There we go. Thanks for the thumbs up, that helps. So we'll just wait a minute or two. While we're waiting, one of the things that I asked you to do on the uh, form that I sent to you in your folder, it gives you a syllabus of what we're going to be covering, but it also explains that you need to subscribe to this channel. By subscribing to this channel, you will get a daily reminder that class is at 8 o'clock. It will tell you the topic that we're going to be covering. So that way you're not going to get caught away from your computer, your phone, or whatever you're going to be viewing this class with. So this is very important. Um, we actually have like 23, 24 people signed up for this class. It is big. Hey, there we go. Everybody signing in. Awesome. Great. Welcome. Welcome. Good evening, everybody. Everybody. And the other thing I've got to get used to, and you'd think after doing this for uh, one and a half classes, I would be used to the lag time. I'm going to actually drop out of the uh, the music here. So let's, let's get rid of that. Okay, so we don't have any more music. Um, but I also want you to like told driving school the facebook page so if you could write this down and i put it on a whiteboard so let me hold this up here so so write down told driving school remote driver's education program or class Now, this is how, this is new. I haven't tried this with any of my previous classes, so this is going to be new. I'm going to try to put homework assignments on the Facebook page. Uh, that way I can download PDFs and links to quizzes and tests and things like that. I was having a problem with um, doing it through text messages. And we're going to talk about text messages and how I use that too. So it's going to be kind of hard to... Um, go through all the different technology that we're going to try to avail ourselves to to make this the best learning um, process for you uh, because it's going to be a while before we get into a vehicle to actually do the driving. As you probably are well aware, I just finished up a class last Thursday. So they went from beginning to end and never drove the driver's ed vehicle. So we are behind uh, with one and a half classes. So I have in excess of 280, 300 hours of driving. 
then we're going to add your class. So when driving does come available, you've got to remember you are going to be near the end of availability. So don't, just like the last class, do not plan on driving during this time frame. We're going to probably have to start at some point a little bit after. I'll try to keep you um, updated the best I can with what is coming from the state. Uh, I got an email late this afternoon indicating that they don't see this week or next week as being uh, probable, but I'm going to uh, remain hopeful that uh, hopefully in the near future that I will start to drive with those that have completed the program and get them done so I can start driving with you. Um, today is basically just registration and an overview of driver's ed, what to expect, what are some of the uh, responsibilities that you're going to have uh, being enrolled in this uh, program. Now, I'm not going to actually um, go through uh, all the names right now to see who's here, who's not. I'm going to do that at the end once you sign off. Um, so let me kind of get into the driver's ed program a little bit. And the nice thing about this program, rather than using Zoom, um, I get to show you what's on my screen or I get to show you my PowerPoints that I have and then throw in some videos. Uh, we're not going to have the face-to-face. -face. I think that's probably what you're doing with your uh, other classes through the high school. But I found that to be a little bit too buggy. Um, I have used Zoom before, not for driver's ed, but in other uh, classes. And just having that awkwardness of waiting for somebody to answer a question, someone's muted, not muted. Um, all your correspondence has to be through um, the comment section here at YouTube, or you can make comments with your with your cell phone. So I'm going to keep mine in, in front of me right now. So let me kind of get into I'm going to get out of this for a second and get right into the program. You'll still be able to hear me. So here I am. So welcome to Driver's Education. You are taking it with Toll Driving School. Uh, I am the sole instructor. So you're going to be doing class with me as well as doing all your driving. Uh, what I'd like you to do right now is there's a cell number. So I want you to what I'd like you to do is to, with your phone, and that's a 603 phone number. So 603-973-9118 is my cell phone. So let me get out of here for a second and go back to me. So hopefully you wrote that down. So what I want everybody to do, now listen up. This is very important. I need you to text me your full name, your first name, your middle name, and your last name. Okay, so I want to text you. I want to get you into my contacts. So a lot of messages uh, are going to show up here rather than up on the computer. So if you've got something to tell me. The other thing is that at any point, I see that I'm kind of peaking a little bit. I got to control the volume. Everything is kind of difficult here. So if it echoes, I'm going to go down a little bit. So if it echoes a little bit, you got to let me know. Just put it in the comments. Mr. Toll, I can't hear you or it's echoing. I can't see the movie. Um, so there are going to be some glitz uh, glitches. So you've got to let me know what they are so I can try to fix them. So let me go back. So you should be texting me soon. So your first name, your middle name, your last name. Okay. And the other thing that I want you to do sometime this evening, if you haven't given me a copy of your birth certificate, some of you... Uh, did that. So I got a few people texting in right now. Thank you. So if you haven't sent me a copy of your birth certificate, let me get out of here for a second. So this is Adam. So Adam gave me a copy of his. So he Adam doesn't have to do this. But what I want you to do is to take a picture of your birth certificate or your passport and text it to me sometime tonight or tomorrow, okay? Because that's going to go in your file. So when we do start driving, I've got record of it. So I just need a photograph. So just take a photograph of your passport. That will that will be fine. Visa will be fine. A birth certificate, 
that way I can check on birth dates and spelling of names. So surprisingly, people have a hard time with middle names. They don't use it that much, so they, they don't go over it. So continue to text in all that information. And by the way, I don't randomly take pictures of people uh, in the driver's ed vehicle as they drive. Uh, that is actually my middle child. That is my daughter. And yes, she had to attend class. She had to sit through the entire course. And actually, I'll tell you a funny story. She could not complete the driver's ed program that she signed up for. She's an athlete. She's a basketball player. Uh, she missed too many classes, and I made her go into the next class to finish up. So she, I wouldn't even let her sit at the kitchen table to do her work. She had to sit through the class and participate in all the activities. Now, the hard thing with us is that we're not going to have activities because we're not meeting as a group. So tonight we're going to go through the basic um, overview of what driver education is, what we want to accomplish. Uh, we'll talk about the dates. Um, some of you have paid, some of you haven't, most of you haven't. And uh, the, I wanted that way because we haven't started driving yet. And I think it's only fair that once we start hitting the road or when the class is completely finished, then you're going to pay for the remainder of the program. And uh, balance, if you want to write this down. So make sure you have a piece of paper and pen with you. This is a class, so you will be taking notes. Some of the questions that I'm going to ask you for the midterm and the final will not be from the reading that you do, but will be from the notes that you're taking. When your parents signed you up for driver's ed, they did uh, indicate uh, with answering some questions that they wanted you to be enrolled in this program. So a permission slip has already been uh, provided to me, but I am going to try to put a copy of that on my group page. So we'll do that at some point. Oh, that's wrong. So I, I didn't change that. So this was my last class. So uh, let me make some changes to that. Okay, so uh, your class is going to go from today's date, which is 518, all the way to June 21st. Because of the size of your class, any driver's ed class that is over 17 students has to be six weeks in length. So from today's date to the 21st of June, will bring us six Mondays. On the 21st will be your final. That is when you're going to complete that portion of your requirement of driver's ed. Now, we will meet Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, but what's wrong with this PowerPoint is that the time has changed. And the reason why it changed, and a few people have asked that question, why do we go from you know, 6.30 uh, start time to 8 o'clock, is when the state does allow me to start driving, I want to be driving every hour that I possibly can. And the state will only allow me to drive 10 hours a day. So I will be driving from probably 8 in the morning till around 6 or 7 at night. And then I'll be racing back home. I live in Rochester. I'll be coming back here to Rochester to get here behind the mic to teach you class at 8 o'clock. Now, on the handout that I gave you, I said from 8 to 9.30, we will probably never go to 9.30. So what I normally would do with a typical class is that we would have uh, group activities. We would have some worksheets to do in class. So I'm going to give you all the material. I can even get out of this for a minute. I'm going to give you all the material in about an hour, hour, 10 minutes. The last 15 minutes, 20 minutes will be used after for you to do your worksheets and send it back into me. That way we'll have our hour and a half. So if we go every single Monday through Thursday date that we have on that sheet, that should get us to the requirement that the state has for us. And the state requirement is to have a program that's 30 hours. So, whoop, that's getting smaller. So I want you to write down a few things here, okay? First thing is that your parents probably have you here to learn to be a good driver, to be a safe driver. Your goal could be different than your parents. When I ask most high school students, why are you taking driver's ed? Well, I don't want my parents to drive me around anymore. I want to be able to go where I want to go, when I want to go. So you're doing it for that sense of freedom. Your parents don't want you to wreck the family car. 
Sometimes those those two things don't jive together. So you better talk to your parents because hopefully you're doing the um, the practice driving. And um, that's a necessity in order for you to get your driver's license. So we can finish up the classroom. We can finish up your observation. You are basically already doing that with your parents. Um, but the problem is going to be um, finishing the 10 hours with me and your parents feeling comfortable with you being able to drive by yourself. We'll talk a little bit more about that. Um, I do want you to write down your notes, even though we're not driving. Oh, you can't hear me? Oh, good. Thank you. Um, how about now? There we go. Awesome. Thanks for telling me. All right, so I'll go back and go over what we just did. Sometimes when I switch between slides, so maybe I won't do that, I have a tendency to, it, it checks off for some reason. So thank you, whoever that was that told me that the, the sound wasn't going through. So let me just say that you're here because you want freedom. Your parents want you to be a safe driver. Um, sometimes that just doesn't mix. Sometimes it's where um, your parents are going to make you wait longer than what you're doing with me. So don't think that um, in the next month and a half, two months, whatever we're going to finish up, that uh, you're automatically going to go get your license because your parents could put a, you know, a kibosh on that, kind of slow things down a little bit. So make sure you're constantly talking with your parents about what you have to do this summer to get your driver's license. You know, once I finish driver's ed, everything, are you going to let me go or am I going to have to wait a little bit longer? Do I got to get a part-time job? Do I have to pay for insurance? Do I have to have better grades? So those things are pretty important. Now, um, the no-show fine, what that basically indicates is that when we do start driving, and I am going to enforce this, so make sure that you are listening to this and you're writing this down, okay? If you sign up for drive at 8 o'clock on a Saturday morning, you better be there, okay? Because uh, if you're not, you're going to be assessed this $30 fine, okay? And you have to let me know at least um, 24 hours. That's what I really, really want. Although I do know that if you wake up in the morning, you don't have that time frame to really let me know that you're not feeling well. And we are in a situation now with the um, the virus that, you know, who knows? Maybe, maybe you could come down with it. Uh, but you got to let me know. And that's the other thing I should talk about right now is when we do start driving is that I've already heard from state officials that the requirements that are going to be set forth about getting in the driver's ed vehicle is going to be very strict where you have to show up with a mask. You have to um, make sure you wash your hands before you come to drive. I'm going to wipe down uh, the inside of the vehicle, the steering wheel, the, the seat belt um, latch. Uh, the door handles. So there's going to be a little bit of a, a wait before we get back into a car uh, after someone else is driven. So it may be five minutes of just kind of cleaning and getting ready. Um, I may even, they said, I may even have to find a thermometer, one that can kind of read a forehead or from a distance, I can check to see what your temperature is before they'll let you drive with me. They haven't really come down with the final uh, requirements, but I did get an email today saying that they're at least talking about that. Um, the last thing that they mention here is about don't be late. Don't um, skip these classes. We are going to go over some s information that's just not in the book, whether it be the state manual or whether it will be the um, textbook that you have and that you're going to have to do your reading and that's going to be part of your assignment is um, reading chapter uh, one in the textbook for tonight and section one in the manual. Now in the, the sheet that I gave you, I gave you a link that can get you to the Department of Safety, I believe, and they have a PDF file that you're going to have to download and downloading that is going to be your requirement to follow along in the state manual. Um, make sure you just come uh, having your homework done. Be here at 8 o'clock. I'm not going to keep you. Like I said, we're never going to go to 930. It's going to be closer to about 9, 10, 9, 15. Um, and then I'll kind of review what we're going to be going over for the next day. 
when we do start driving, I'm very strict on this. Cell phones have to be turned off completely or they're going to have to be put on vibrate. I don't want you uh, grabbing your cell phone to turn it off um, or looking for it. That's just not going to happen. Okay, that's that's something I'm pretty strict on. I do ask that when you do show up, bring sunglasses and shoes that you feel comfortable to drive in. Uh, I don't want you to be uncomfortable. Uh, the sun is going to be very bright. Um, if you haven't driven in the summer, um, early in the morning, late afternoon, probably around 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock, it, it, when the sun's just going below the horizon, you're going to need glasses. You cannot just rely on the sun visor. Uh, you did the payment for registering. I said your remainder will be six twenty-five, dollars and we're going to pay that at the end of this program or when we start driving, so you don't have to worry about that. I saw people have started to send in their birth certificates, so if you don't do it today, do it tomorrow, do it sometime this week. That's fine because we're not driving for a while, so I'm not really too concerned about that. The reason why I want the birth certificates right now is just to make sure that your name is spelled correctly. You'd be surprised how many times I find people making a mistake on, on names, things like that. Whoop. A little bit about me. I've been doing this for a long time. I think it's been 35 years come this June. Um, I haven't always been doing it uh, full-time. I have been doing it uh, part-time at um, some point in my life. But I've been doing it full-time at Oyster River, I believe, 16, 17 years I've been at Oyster River. And I do enjoy the students and the staff and being there. Um, I do like being in a classroom. I don't mind the online, but I do think having people where we can have dialogue and discussion, um, do some group activities, it just makes the time go a little bit quicker. So I do enjoy that. But we'll make the best with what we have here online. I have served on various state of New Hampshire traffic safety boards and associations, so I'm going to give you up-to-date information on what I have found from the Department of Safety and different conferences that I've gone to, because um, I think being a knowledgeable driver is the beginning of being a safe driver. Uh, you can always learn how to control gas, brake, steering wheel. Anybody can teach you that. At some point, you've got to go just beyond the basics. You've got to dig a little bit deeper. You have to have a better understanding of why things are done uh, because at some point in your life, you're going to need it. Okay, driving on a back road, okay, once you get used to the gas, brake, and steering is simple, simple, simple. But learning to drive on a multi-lane highway, making lane changes, parallel parking, those are highest skill activities behind the wheel of a car. And you're only going to get better at that by doing it often and learning what works, what doesn't work, and why you're doing it a certain way. So that's why we're here and what we want to accomplish. Um, I've got a couple of videos for you. So what I usually do here is I click onto a video that will pop in. And I want to introduce Andy Pilgrim, who I've met twice at different driver's ed conferences. And... He is a computer technician that really did well for himself, a multi-million dollar company, I believe, and he had a love of racing cars, and um, he was finding that uh, people would always ask him, how can I apply some of these principles and teach my kid to be a, a good driver, a safe driver? So he, he's taken some time and he's developed some videos, and um, we're going to take a look at a couple of them today. I do use them some other times during throughout the program. But I uh, just want to let you know, he is one uh, cool guy, uh, very knowledgeable, and he really believes in his message and his techniques. So let me introduce Andy to you on a, a little bit of a introduction here, and then we'll get right into his videos. In 1989, I started an IT consulting business in South Florida. And in 1998, I became a U.S. citizen. I'm probably best known as a professional race driver and have been racing for over 27 years. So far in my professional racing career, I've won five championships and over 60 races. My sports car career has spanned driving in one-hour sprint races up to 24-hour races and all over the world. I was even fortunate enough to run the 24 Hours of Daytona with NASCAR legends Dale Earnhardt and Dale Earnhardt Jr. in 2001. 
and several NASCAR road course races since then. On the education side, I've been speaking about the dangers of distracted driving to high school students since 1994. The most important link between race driving and driving on the street is concentration and paying attention. I have to use all my concentration while racing and at all times in my street driving. We all know that having a driver's license does not automatically make someone a good and safe driver. I produced the Driving Zone 2 DVD in 2011 to help driver education teachers with new information they can use in the classroom. This information is totally up to date and addresses the knowledge new drivers desperately need to help them survive the early years of street driving. Thousands of copies have been requested so far by public school driver education teachers and my foundation has given them away at no charge to the schools or the teachers. I work to educate new drivers because too many of them are having collisions and crashes and many with fatal consequences. It does not have to happen. I know that knowledge and education definitely helps. Along with using my own driving knowledge and skills, I've gained information from speaking with thousands of young people and parents. I have also spoken with many other driving professionals, such as police officers and driving education experts, including people from the NHTSA and highway experts at other federal agencies. This production brings all the best data I have gathered over the years, together with the most up-to-date knowledge and information available. In order to get the most out of your time here, please make sure you've turned your phone off before we continue with the... Let me explain how I came to make this parent-focused driving video. I have been speaking with driver education teachers for many years. On numerous occasions, we discussed how parent driving behavior was both positively and negatively affecting new drivers. We knew the negative effects outweighed the positive, but had never understood the real extent of the problem until recent research studies were published. These new studies give data on exactly how much parent driving behavior affects their children's driving. Some of them show that 70 to 75% of new drivers drive with the same distractions and distracted driving behavior they've learned from watching their parents drive as they grew up. Now, 70 to 75% is a huge number. We have other data that backs this up. Another study asked young drivers who was their biggest influence on how they drive. Again, 75% said it was their parents, well ahead of friends, laws, police, driver's ed, and tragic stories. So parents have a, a huge influence on what you're doing. And now parents are going to be responsible for checking off on your observation hours. And I believe I may have put that in your folder. Uh, so while you're taking this class and you're continuing to drive with your parents, whether you're driving or you're in the passenger seat observing, uh, they need to sign off that they've actually um, helped you with um, learning the finer skills to drive. And I want you to write down these terms. Judgment, courtesy, choice, responsibility, and awareness. Okay, these are key components to being a good driver. Like I said, anybody can learn the gas, the brake, the steering. I find when parents tell me what is the hardest thing to teach in driver's ed, it's reasoning and judgment of when to do things. Some people are afraid to pull out into traffic, when to make a lane change, when to check their mirrors. Um, but the actual movement of the vehicle is quite easy, you know, after a while. Usually after three or four hours, most people can keep a car going straight down the roadway. Maybe turns might be a little bit tricky, but. Uh, that comes with time too, but it's the judgment and the reasoning. So what I want you to do in the mess in the comments and the reaction section of YouTube here, just so I can see who's still on, because I notice that the numbers drop down to 17. I can see how many people are actually watching now. I don't know who they are, but I know the numbers down a little bit from what we've got for people that are enrolled in this class. So what I want you to do in the comments section, I want you to come up with another term um, that would describe a good safe driver all right so i'm going to uh, wait just a few moments for people to start filling something in and some of the terms are going to be identical i'm not looking for brand new terms you just can't use the five that you have up here on the board so if i was to ask you which i am right now what is a term that you would 
describe a good driver? What would they what would they be? What would they have to do? Now, moving a vehicle doesn't mean that you can drive, like I said. Now, I thought this was a kind of a humorous story that I found, and I've seen this many times. I just saw another one. I should have replaced it with this one. But a six-year-old boy was a little bit hungry, and apparently his favorite food was Chinese food. So while his parents were sleeping, he decided he would get into the car and drive to get his favorite Chinese food. Now, think about it. A six-year-old boy, how far do you think he got down the street? Didn't get very, he got the car started. See, that's the thing, is that you may think you know how to drive. You may think you know which pedal can make the car go faster or slower, and you can learn that pretty quick. But think about a six-year-old boy. He thinks he can make it to where he wants to go. Well, he didn't, of course. Okay, crashed the car. Um, so it's easy to teach people to drive the movement. It's tough. Um doing the reason and judgment thing. Now, this is one of my favorite things. Great terms people come at. Focus, patient, careful, alert, calm. I like it. Yeah. Patient, respectful. Yeah. Awesome. Great. Good job. This is one of my favorite um, sayings. Um, you don't have to write the top part, but let me just read the first part of this. The lowest level of driving is assuming. Okay, you never want to assume. I, I think I can make a lane change. I think I can pass that car. You got to know. So above assumption is knowledge, then understanding, then wisdom, which is applied knowledge, then pace, uh, practice, and then finally skill. So this is the hierarchy of learning anything. It could be learning how to play basketball. It could be learning how to paint. It could be learning how to cook. There are some things that you could just look at and go, oh, I think I could do that. You know, I think I could, let's just say baking. I think I can, I know what a cake, cake is eggs, flour, milk probably. And yeah, but if you don't put in the right amounts at the right degree temperature of an oven, you got the right ingredients, but the outcome is not going to be what you want. The same thing about driving. To really, really be good at it, you've got to know when to do something, how to do something. There are so many other things that you probably haven't even started to think about. And that's what we want to do. We want to just kind of scrape. We don't want to scrape the surface. We want to get down and dig deep to why are we doing what we're doing. So this is what I want you to write down. Anyone can know and understand something. Okay. And even do it successfully once or twice. But the ability to accomplish the same thing routinely is where success is found. Okay, once again, anyone can know and understand something. Anyone. Okay? That's why we can teach just about anybody about driving. And you could probably do it once or twice. But to do it over a period of time, to accomplish that same thing routinely is where success is found. Think of how many people have a job where they do something for hours on end, like they work in a factory. They can probably do it with their eyes closed. Now, I don't want you to, to, to do this, but you may want to ask your parents. Ask your parents, do they ever find themselves driving and not thinking about driving? I think if your parents are honest, they're going to probably say, yeah, there are some times. I will guarantee, and I, I'm going to chance maybe losing my thing here. I'm going to come back here. I'm going to bet that any of you that have shoelaces on right now, I bet you woke up this morning and you didn't look at those shoelaces and you didn't think to yourself, now what do I do? Do I take my left hand and go around? What do I, my right hand goes this way? You just automatically did it. Okay, so what I want you to write down is muscle memory. Any type of skill is when you're doing it over and over and over again, you're building muscle memory where you're going to be doing, doing that skill without much thought. It's just going to be automatic. Now, this is one of my favorite examples in a movie about muscle memory. So watch this.
Hang up your jacket. Take it down. Put it on. Take it off. I already did. Jacket off. Kung Fu, I've seen how we put on the jacket. Be strong. Take off the jacket. And live seen how we treat people. Everything is Kung Fu. Jacket off! <laughs> Now, how cool is that? At the very end, when his, his sensei, his instructor is looking at him and, and nodding, and he's looking at his hands and he's going, did I just do that? Okay, that is what you want to take place when you drive. It just is something that you just automatically know when to check your mirrors, how to check your gauges, when to use your signal, when to use the brake. It, it doesn't get to be where you're guessing anymore or missing the right thing at the right time. You're just automatically doing, and that's what we want, want to accomplish. So what is practice? You don't practice something till you get it right. You practice something till you don't get it wrong. I think that's a kind of a cool saying. And this um, Gino uh, Oriyama was the uh, or is the head women's basketball coach at UConn, and he's had a, two decades of of just constant winning because he knows how to train and teach the skill of basketball. He's 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 probably the best. Some of these videos I did not download because um, I don't think we were going to have enough time for that. So um, let me just kind of go over some of the things that when your parents go out um, with you that they should discuss and talk. And that's part of the observing is they've got to communicate with you is that they're going to be showing you good driving skills and why is it important for you to be a safe and good driver. It's just not giving you directions anymore. It's more of the commentary. And that's the thing that when I was doing observation with students, this is what I would do. So I put that in that sheet to help your parents out, asking the questions, what, where, and why, and how about driving. Because there's always going to be things that you probably never really thought about. You just watch your parents do and just took it as, okay, they did that. It turned out okay, so I guess I'm going to do it when I drive. But just to get into discussion, that's the the base uh, basic thing here, and then all these the, these to uh, topics will be coming up in driver's ed, in classes that will follow. Um, same thing here. I'm not going to watch that or that. Now, driver's ed um, is a lifelong skill that you're going to be using. You're you're 16 now. You're going to probably be driving into your 80s. So you're looking at, um, you know, 20 uh, minus 16. Uh, you're looking at around 64 years of driving. Um, but we also know that sometimes people's lives are cut short in a vehicle. And I thought this was a very sad, a sad article where a Michigan family loses their second son in a car crash in four months. So you've got to take this seriously because injuries and death is just part of driving it doesn't have to be it doesn't have to be especially if you're careless and i don't know what happened in these crashes but that's a high percentage two family members and one family in in four months that i cannot believe the pain that parents and uh, other family members must be feeling of of losing two sons um you can write this down. You can find it online if you are in class. Uh, I don't have any books that I can give. That's why I didn't give it to you when you picked up your textbook. But uh, this is something called Road Ready. There's an app that you can download. This will help you uh, keep track of your 40 hours if you haven't been doing it. I want you to write down, though, that the state does require you to print it out. So even if you do it with the cell phone, it is going to be a requirement uh, for you to print it out. So if you do show up for your, your license test and you only have it on your phone, they're going to send you home. So I don't want you to start using it and not hear it from me. So use it, but look for a print object. I think there's probably in the settings where you can actually print it out. So make sure that you do that. Uh, I also provided a link on that sheet that I gave you in the folder. And you can download a sheet if you haven't been filling out. You just can't do it on a blank piece of paper. 
And the other thing about observation is um, it has to be printed out what you, um, not observation, your uh, 40 hours of practice driving. The skill that you're practicing has to be um, specific. So you just can't write driving back roads. It's got to be speed control, turns, um, lane changes, um, perpendicular parking, angle parking, city driving. Um, I guess you could do rural driving, but just don't say driving, 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 and put down hour, 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 hour. So they want to see some different skills, and hopefully not every drive that you have is going to be an hour. So those are the different forms that they have. Okay, safe driving is the result of consistent practice of good driving skills and decision making. There's nothing miraculous about the process. There is no luck involved. Okay, whatever you practice will become habit over time. The only difference between being a good driver um, is your effort and your attitude. So I think if you put in the time, put in the effort, that you're going to you're going to do well. I'm going to kind of hand you back over to Andy. Um, I want you to write down these two terms. He's going to be talking about this in this next video clip. There's two more clips that I have from him uh, that should take us uh, pretty much up towards the top of the hour. Um, I want you to write down um, dangerous. So write down dangerous or vulnerable. Okay, vulnerable. When you're distracted, when you're not paying attention to your driving, Andy's going to explain why you're going to either be dangerous. So that means you're going to probably be doing the uh, driving your vehicle into other cars, into other objects. Now, vulnerable means that you're not paying attention. You're not doing anything wrong, but you're not paying attention to see where other people are making mistakes and you're driving in to a situation that you should be trying to get away from like a car that crosses the center line. If a car is going over the center line and you're looking at your phone or looking down at the radio or looking at maybe your passengers in the back seat, you're not going to steer away from that car that's coming towards you. You're going to just stay right where you are and you're going to get hit. So that's what's making you vulnerable. So let's see how Andy will explain the complexities of learning to drive. In 1989, I started an IT consultant. Permit year is when children actually start to drive a vehicle on the roads. They will be starting a learning process that never ends. All of the states have their own rules and laws regarding learner drivers. Some states allow new drivers to obtain a driver's permit at 14 and a half, others at 15, on up to 16. The states also refer to these driving permits in many different ways, as you can see here. Some states require these learner drivers to drive with a supervising adult passenger for six months, but most up to a year. The states also have different ages when a new driver can progress to a full or probationary license. To keep things simple, I'm going to refer to this very important learning time as permit year throughout this production, because most states require 12 months before a learner driver can progress to their full license. Please check the websites listed for more information. Every day, I learn something new about driving or see something happen on the roads I never saw before. If you think driving is boring, then you're not engaged enough in the driving process. Changes are constant on the roads, and it's the duty of all drivers to be ready. Being aware and prepared keeps drivers much safer over the years. Driver education teachers have mandated curriculums. They have to spend time on things such as laws, statistics, street signs, and road markings. My focus in the parent driving zone and the driving zone too is to provide an understanding of the dangers of distracted driving and provide information to help the new driver survive those critical early years. I want to make a few points before parents sign off on the driving permit. Remember, it is up to you to give permission to start the driving process for your child. When it comes to driving, the balance between laws and personal responsibility are provided by education, wise choices, and reasoned actions. Make sure your house is in order. If you know from watching The Driving Zone 2 and the prior information presented here that you have been guilty of distracted driving behaviors, then the very first thing I recommend is a sit-down session to address this with your child or children. 
You need to do this whether your child has shown interest in driving or not. Tell them you had never thought about many of the things you've learned here before and are going to change your distracted driving behavior. It's possible you had ignored good information and even the pleas of your own children to put your phone away. Please, never ignore your children if they bring up your distracted driving. I hear this from children of all ages these days. Remember, your children are not in your vehicle that much. The phone use and all driving distractions can certainly wait until you're safely parked. If you stick to your behavior changes, your child will see this and ultimately understand you are trying to change for them. It's never too late to set a safer example. In many cases, distracted driving behavior such as answering a phone, messing with papers or drinking coffee while driving has become automatic. Work as a team. Encourage your children to remind you and help you. Have your child turn your phone off or put it in the trunk or glove box for you. I do not think your child should be relaying phone messages or texts. Every time you are using the phone with a child in the vehicle, other than for an emergency, you are choosing convenience now over safety for your child later. Cut out all distractions, stay in the driving zone, and just drive. Parents need to know the laws regarding graduated licensing and the laws for the probationary driving periods after the permit year. The websites listed give information for all parents to help them find guidelines for their state. We are going to talk about the guardian principles of mobility. These are key words and principles that many driver educators, including myself, use to bring gravity and meaning to this lifetime career we all know as driving. Here are the principles. Judgment. You understand the power you possess while driving and your decisions will reflect this awesome reality. Courtesy. You think of other road users and will always be considerate. Choice. You understand you have a choice before making any decision behind the wheel. Responsibility. You own and are responsible for everything you do and don't do while driving a vehicle. Awareness. You know you have to be aware at all times to help you see the constant changes going on all around you. I strongly suggest you ask your child to come up with another word or principle that they can call their own. Many drivers I have spoken to come up with some great words and principles. The fundamental understandings of driving come up next. These fundamentals add gravity and reality to the driving discussion and are extremely important points. All new drivers should appreciate and be aware of these fundamentals. One, driving is not a right. Two, driving is a privilege that comes with responsibilities. Three, driving is different. Driving is the only thing that most of us will ever do on a daily basis that has the ability to kill and injure self, friends, family, and even people we don't know. This section I call Safe House. This information can make all new driving students a lot more comfortable about learning to drive with a parent or guardian. This is a combination of contract and team effort. Let me explain. It is no secret that parents and children sometimes have arguments and relationship issues. It's just a fact of life. So, we need to make any vehicle you teach your child to drive in a safe house. For example, if you're in the middle of any kind of argument or issue with your child, and then an hour later you are supervising their driving, safe house means that whatever it was that you were arguing about or discussing the hour before cannot be brought up at all in the vehicle by either of you. Supervised driving time is too important for distracting emotions to be involved. You are a team. You both have a responsibility to work on the safe house agreement. The adult or parent doing the driving supervision is always the second set of eyes. Remember, high emotions, anger and aggressiveness are all driving distractions. There is another important point in the safe house agreement. I would advise you to set up an alarm word that can remind you both that a subject is out of bounds. You can find any word that when said, both of you know to change the subject. Just one word. Use a word that makes sense. A word like cyclist would not be very useful in a driving situation, but a word such as strawberry could work well. This agreement should also work when the parent or guardian is driving. 
In other words, no arguments ever while driving. Now we need to add another important key to understanding if your child is ready to drive and also add a very important training tool for parents. I will now explain passenger driving commentary. You will see different parent, child and new driver participation in this section. There are several steps I need to go over here. Step 1. I will explain right seat or passenger side commentary. The setup for this is with an adult driving and the child in the passenger seat. The object of this exercise is for a parent to understand how the child is using their eyes and what they perceive and observe out on the road as the parent or guardian is driving. There are two basic questions you can ask them. What do you see that is potentially dangerous? Where could hidden danger come from? Have a talk about it before you go out driving so your child knows what to expect. Initially, the parent will drive and the new driver will listen to better understand how this works. After the child has a grasp of what commentary driving is all about, then they can start to commentate as the parent is driving and listening. Here is me giving an example of the type of commentary we would like to hear from the right seat. Be prepared. We've got the construction on the right here. There could be workers, there could be pedestrians getting around the construction, cars trying to look around the construction. You have to be aware. Cyclists there on the right, trucks in front, cars coming faster on the left. You be aware, you're ready, you're looking in your mirrors, you're glancing every five to seven seconds in those mirrors. You have to know what's coming from behind. You have cars coming straight down, two lanes, you have a traffic light, cars coming from the right, cars coming from the left from two or three different areas, three different side roads, side streets and parking lots and people doing U-turns. There are huge blind spots here. Again, you anticipate that somebody's going to come between the cars. You're gonna, a child could run away from its mom between the cars, a pedestrian rushing or on the phone distracted. You've got a lady carrying a baby across the road there. You've got somebody opening their door here with the Range Rover on the right. A lot of pedestrians here, pedestrian area, a lot of restaurants. You have to anticipate a lot of danger here. People are looking for where they want to go. They're looking for a parking space. It's not a place to be distracted. This is exactly the type of commentary a parent would be hearing from the right seat if the child was doing a good job. John has only had his license for a short while and is still in high school. We sat down for a few minutes and I briefly explained passenger seat commentary driving. We then went out and after listening to me for less than five minutes, he had a go at commentary driving himself. Here is a part of it. There's a car coming this way, just past us. There's signs, blind driveways, left and right. There is a curve in the road. There's two driveways, no cars coming. There's signs that might block vision coming up. There's no traffic currently coming. There's cars parked, multiple signs and flags. There's a truck pulling out ahead, coming this way, taking a wide turn. There's blind driveways with signs in front. There's lots of trees and foliage. More signs, more parked cars. None of them appear to be moving. John did a great job. I asked him if he learned anything from our brief lesson. I definitely learned something. I mean, for the most part, I try to be very cautious and look around. And I realized I got to lift my eyes up, kind of look ahead a little bit, because there's stuff that's not necessarily close that I need to pay attention to as well. I want to clarify how drivers see traffic situations. This can be broken down into three main areas. An aware driver who is not distracted and is completely in the driving zone will see things in their central vision, their peripheral vision, and also use anticipation. Traffic situations that develop in our central vision are relatively easy to pick up as we drive, providing we are looking ahead and we are not mentally distracted in a phone call or in a conversation with a passenger. Traffic situations in our peripheral vision are much harder to pick up and require eye scanning, eyes up, and full attention. The most important skill I use on the roads is anticipation. The essential understanding for using anticipation is this. You will anticipate that any vehicle, pedestrian, cyclist, or whatever else you see around you as you drive will do the unexpected. For example, the car in front of you will suddenly stop. The guy waiting to pull out will do it right in front of you. The driver of the vehicle behind you is texting and will not stop when you do. 
the person in the left lane will suddenly turn right. Anticipation while driving means always expecting the unexpected by planning a way out or leaving enough space around your vehicle to stay clear. Let's listen as I use anticipation. We are coming from a green light. We are aware of our speed. We are doing mirror checks all the time. The car on our left is going a little faster. That car is coming. We now have a situation with a turn signal. Car going from the middle to the right. Car on the right. We're anticipating they're gonna pull out. We're anticipating the car ahead of us on the left will turn to the right. We're now coming up to a stop sign. We're looking in our mirrors, we're glancing in the mirrors, making sure that everybody's slowing down. If not everybody's slowing down, you've got to have an out. Everybody's going slowly, slowing down here. We're now at the red light. Cars behind us have stopped. We've anticipated the problems from behind. We have plenty of room. There really is no time to be distracted while driving. Hopefully it is now obvious that commentary driving trains new drivers how to use their eyes. The analysis of a collision chapter in part two clearly defines why it is so important for new drivers to have more time to see developing traffic situations. Please review that section at any time to help you. Using our central vision, peripheral vision, and anticipating problems takes full concentration for all drivers. It should now be obvious to anyone watching that any distraction will cut down or stop our potential to pick up danger earlier. The earlier we perceive change or danger that could enter into our driving space, the more time we have to react and avoid it. Key point. So what I want you to write down is commentary driving. That is what your parents should be doing. They should be, when, they do the, when you do your six hours of observation, they're looking at, let's say, the traffic light. And just like you saw Andy explain, whatever you're seeing and you're thinking, you're verbally speaking it out. And the nice thing about putting a young driver in the driver's seat and having them do commentary driving is you get to see what their mind is thinking about. I, I would almost bet if I had you in class and I asked you, how many of you have parents that go, break, 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 slow, slow, slow. And you go, I know, I know, mom, I see it, I see it. By doing commentary driving, you would be going, okay, I see the light changing, or I see the pedestrian, and I'm going to go to my break. Giving your parents an idea that you see it, you know it, that you're going to do it, then they can react to what you're actually doing with the car. Are you slowing it down enough? So that's where commentary driving comes into play with observation and also helps with training, uh, seeing what you're thinking about, what your reasoning and your judgment behind um, your driving decisions, and that's really important. Now, he didn't get into um, dangerous and vulnerable, so let's, let's try it right here. I think this is where we can pick it up. the distracted driving issue that all drivers need to understand and it revolves around overall awareness. If your eyes or mind are away from driving for some distraction, then you are always either dangerous or vulnerable. Let me explain. Many drivers, both experienced and new, believe they are safe and doing nothing wrong as they drive distracted, if you can believe that. They tell me they can drive distracted, maintain their speed, stay in their lane, etc. They actually tell me this as if they are above the distracted driving problem. I want to change this extremely dangerous perception right here. We've all seen or heard tragic stories about drivers hitting other vehicles head on. A driver who veers into another lane or into oncoming traffic is completely unaware. There is no doubt about that one, but let's look a little deeper. To the drivers who think they can successfully drive distracted, I explain this. You may think you can drive distracted and not be dangerous, but I know for certain you are vulnerable. Imagine for the sake of discussion that you were looking away from the road for a second or deep into your phone call, right at the moment an oncoming vehicle veered into your lane. Exactly. You would not see them at all if you were looking away or you would react much slower because you were distracted and your mind was deep into the phone call. Not good, huh? Research shows us that this is accurate. Every day this tragic scenario plays out on the roads. Bad choices followed by unfortunate timing. It takes two fully or partially distracted drivers coming together in most collisions and crashes. Never give up your chance to see distracted drivers coming into your driving space. 
I don't want you to be dangerous or vulnerable. And please, never with children in the vehicle. Many drivers, both experienced and new, are not respecting that driving is different. The potential downside to driving mistakes are well known to parents. Driving deserves more respect from all drivers. The cost of avoidable mistakes by new drivers is mind-numbing. We are talking avoidable heartbreak and billions in medical expenses, legal costs and property damage. There is a troubling trend I need parents to be aware of. Many teens are now waiting to take the driving test until they are 18 or 19 years of age. In most states, an 18 or 19 year old can walk into a DMV and take their driving test with no driver training whatsoever. This information should clearly be a wake up call to all parents. I definitely want to give a shout out to parents watching who take driving very seriously and never drive distracted, especially when there are children in the vehicle. The information and knowledge here has to be aimed at the majority of parents and adults who drive distracted every day. I made my second PSA truth to give non-distracted driving parents and adults respect and to also shine another light on the extent of the distracted driving problem. I just never thought my kid was paying that much attention to my driving. Let's take a look at truth. I have three wonderful children. They've learned everything else from me. Why would driving be any different? Driving deserves respect. If something had happened to my kid because they had been driving with a distraction that I know in my heart they had learned from me, I would never forgive myself. It's not enough to tell them. With driving, you have to show them the right way. Before I get into obstacles, I want to share a very important piece of data about exactly how long most people drive with their children in their vehicle. There are variables to consider such as age of the children, do the children go to daycare or school, one and two parent homes, etc. But the average amount of time parents spend ferrying their children around is usually between 10 and 30 hours a month. The average driver is in their car for 70 to 90 hours a month. Please make sure you drive distraction-free at all times, but especially when your children are in the vehicle. So, let's check out the obstacles. Well, distractions have been around a while. I'm going to explain why smartphones and smart devices are being singled out for so much discussion and new laws against their use while driving. Eating a burger and phone use are both driving distractions that cause vehicle collisions and crashes every day. But there is a very important difference between the many driving distractions such as eating a burger and the use of smartphones while driving. This difference is critical to understanding the whole distracted driving issue, and that is frequency. You don't spend hours eating a burger as you drive, but people do spend hours talking on the phone. The huge problem for new drivers is that they spend five to seven hours on their smartphones per day, but it's not phone calls for them, it's texting, email, updating message boards, etc. It's now reached four to 5,000 text messages a month for the average 14-year-old, and it's going up all the time. This texting or typing reality is exactly why all parents and adults need to separate their phone use from driving when children are in the vehicle. If parents consistently separate driving from phone use, then over time, children will see that driving is different and that smartphone use must wait. If adults don't separate their use of a smartphone while driving with their children in the car, then there is little to no chance their child will put the phone away as they start to drive. Remember, 
It's not enough just to tell them, you have to show them the If I had a dollar for every time. Okay, um, so you can see that distraction is a main topic in driver's ed right now. He spent a lot of times talking about concentration and uh, how it's only getting worse. And, and that's definitely something that we're going to talk more, more about. But this is kind of bringing us towards the end of, of today. Let me just kind of clean up the back screen here a little bit. There we go. So what I want you to do is to get your folder out and see this piece of paper that I included in your folder. What I would like you to do is to fill that out. Take a picture of it. Take a picture of it. And send it to me. That way I've, I've got record of it. This is what, what I'll do is I'll just kind of, you know, print it out on the um, copier and I'll have it. So when we do start our driving, but a lot of the information I have to send out to the state this week of who's in this driver's ed class. Now I was during that last video, which was kind of a little bit longer. I was able to look through. There are some people that didn't show up today for class. So I've got to find out who may not make it make the cut. So just because you're registered, you have to do what the state requires. You've got to be here. And that's why you got to look in the folder and, and see when topics and homework and stuff. So this I do need. So I want you to write that, uh, do that. Uh, you don't have to do it right now because uh, I'm going to explain homework in a moment. And then what I'll do is I'll sign off for tonight. Like I said, that will give you about 15 minutes. So everybody should be done all their work um, by um by 9 30. so this form has to be filled out if you have any questions on how to fill it out uh, just text me but basically uh, what you've done already your uh, last name first name middle name leave the class session blank i'm going to take care of that uh, birth date i want it two ways i want you to write it the the way like today's date is uh, 5 18 20. so i want you to do the month day year that you were born and then right below it i want you to write down may 18th 2020 that way that way i'll be able to see because sometimes i i can't tell with numbers how people write whether it is so if i see it twice it, it kind of drives it home uh put down male female put down your phone number your parents phone number i think i've got that with the registration remember on the address put down your street a number with the name of the street, the city, state, zip code, and your email. Because I think part of the problem was um, I was sending information to emails to um, your account when your parents really needed it. So, and remember the copy of the birth certificate. What I would like everybody to do right now, I've just made myself, you have to go to YouTube. You're looking at this hopefully on YouTube. There should be a button that says subscribe. I think only two of you have done it so far. Subscribe to the YouTube channel because this will give you a link in to tomorrow's class. Okay, it will be sent to you telling you toll driving school at eight o'clock. The topic is going to be the highway transportation system and uh, what is considered a safe driver. So we kind of got into that a little bit tonight with with Andy Pilgrim, but um, that will be sent to you. The other thing is I want you to go to Facebook and to like the page, like Toll Driving School, remote, remote driver's ed class, and I have a link. I have a link to a pretest that the state wants to know what your basic knowledge is. Now, if this doesn't work, my wife is trying to set me up on this. I'm not too into this um, groups with Facebook. I have a Facebook page, but just a personal and just an, an overview for toll driving school. But this, this page is just going to be for us. This is just for this class. And this is where I want to post my uh, PDFs and my links. So the link to the pretest is going to be on that site. So I'm going to try to get it out to you later tonight. Uh, if that doesn't work, I'm just trying to think of plan B. If that doesn't work, I've got everybody's text message. I appreciate you texting your name to me. So I'll send you a link if it doesn't work. If the Facebook page thing doesn't work, then I'll do it that way. Now, for the last thing that you've got to do for tomorrow's class, if you take a look at the sheet, okay, for 
May 19th. It says chapter 1. Chapter 1, section 1. Now SM stands for state manual. RD is for responsible driver. So that's where you're going to do your reading. And this is the, the, you won't be able to see the answers, but this is the, the textbook. Okay, so the questions for chapter one, you can write this down, is page 21. There are only 10 questions to the chapter. Very easy. Six multiple choice, four fill in the blanks. Okay, but you got to get like it. You want to score 80s on your on your homework. Okay, the whole class, this class is pass fail. So you've got to be in attendance. Uh, you've got to do your homework and you've got to score well on your homework. Uh, I do a midterm and I do a final. And that's going to get us through the classroom. Um, like I said, if you have any questions, uh, text me on my phone. That's the best way to get a hold of me. Um, John, you didn't have that form, so I'm going to hand that to you tomorrow. I'll drop that by to you so you'll have that. And then um, you can just, you know, send me a picture later tomorrow when I drop off the textbook. Um, but that's uh, kind of an overview of what driver's ed is. Like I said, the online uh, class is a lot different. I, I really do miss the dialogue that I could look out amongst you and ask you questions. And you could open up and ask me questions about maybe the state and the licensing system. So it gets to be kind of tough just talking to a screen and a camera. Um, but I think the last class did very well. Uh, they did very well on the final. There was only one person that didn't do too good, but um, he'll have a retake and he'll do well. And that's the other thing I should have mentioned with a pass-fail class is that uh, I'll work with you to you know the information. You just can't not show up and do your work. That That is so key to get um, through the classroom portion of driver's ed so please be present if you know anybody that signed up that didn't show up i'm looking at the screen right now let's see we've got 21 people i looked during the video it was down to around 18 so i don't know if people are cutting out and coming back uh, try not to do that because um, you never know what you're going to miss and i really appreciate whoever is telling me that they can't hear me or there's an echo Top notch. I'm going to look through who, who was doing that, but that means you're here and you're participating and you're, you're helping me make this a better um, program. So that is it for tonight. So have a good night. Do your reading. Uh, send me a picture of that sheet and I'll get the information into the state. So you'll have this portion of driver's ed taken care of. So we have completed our first night of driver's ed. So see you tomorrow at 8 o'clock. Have a good night.